The Electrician's Toolkit. As you progress in your career in the electrical industry, you find yourself purchasing more and more tools for various different tasks. So you get to the point you've not much room left in your van for any more. What we're going to look at here though, is some of the essential tools that you require when you're starting out your work as an electrician in the electrical industry. We'll be going through what the tools are, what they're designed for, how to use them, and most importantly, how to maintain and look after these tools. One of the first tools that we're going to look at is the insulated screwdriver. Any electrician using a screwdriver should consider having a set of insulated screwdrivers. The plastic surrounding the metal shaft here will protect you from the risk of electric shock should you come into contact with any live terminals. However, you should really never be sticking your screwdriver into live parts of an electrical installation. If you do find that the insulation ever becomes damaged on your screwdriver, you should think about replacing it as soon as possible because this could be a serious risk and you don't really want to give yourself an electric shock. The next tool we're going to look at is the pliers. Now, as you can see, these pliers are also insulated, as with most electrician's tools, to protect you from the risk of electric shock should they come into contact with the live part. Now, you'll find these in most electrician's toolkits, and I'll give you a quick demonstration of how easy it is to remove the sheathing from cable with these pliers. So as you can see, I've got the sheathing on the cable here. It's quite easy to take the pliers and nip the end off. And once you have the CPC exposed, you can easily tear it down the sheathing, exposing the conductors with the insulation. They also have a cutting part to these tools, which you can take off the excess sheathing. It's perfect, ready for connecting into a terminals. So another tool we have, side cutters. Now, they're fairly straightforward. They generally only have one purpose, and that's to cut cable. As you can see with this cable here, I want to get rid of this extra stuff that's on the end. So I take the side cutters, snip it off, and you've got a nice clean cut again, ready to be stripped and re-terminated. Now we're going to have a look at wire strippers. Very commonly found in an electrician's toolkit, but very rarely used for their intended purpose. I'm going to show you here how these can be used very efficiently to take off the insulation that surrounds the conductor of a cable. When you take the wire strippers, you need to adjust them to the correct size for the cable that you're stripping. Once you have them correctly adjusted, you simply place them over the insulation and peel off. Now what this does, it gives you a nice clean removal of the insulation and doesn't damage any of the copper conductor. So that's absolutely perfect for termination. Something that's absolutely essential for anybody working in the electrical industry or any part of the construction industry for that matter is the tape measure. If you want to install equipment onto a wall or onto a ceiling, you need to make sure that it's in the right place. Using a tape measure to take the measurements and mark up is the easy way to do it. However, these can be quite dangerous tools. Most of them have this retracting function. When you pull the button, it slides back in. The edges of the tape measure are very sharp if you get your finger in the way when you're retracting that, it can give you a nasty cut. If you're working on a construction site, lots of dirt, lots of grease around, it won't take long for a cut like that to be infected. As simple a tool as it may be, you should always be safe when using it. The next tool we're going to look at is the hacksaw. The hacksaws come in various different sizes. You have junior hacksaws for small bits of metal, and you have large hacksaws for conduit and maybe cutting a bit of metal trunking. The one we're going to look at is a large hacksaw. One of the important things to remember when you're putting the blades onto a hacksaw is that they're pointing in the right direction. Now you can see here that the points on the blade point in one particular direction. And it's important when you put it onto the hacksaw that that is facing forward. So when you apply pressure onto the handle, you've got the pointy bits making the cut into what it is that you're trying to cut. Well now we're going to have a look at the hammer. What can I say, it's a fairly versatile tool and I'm sure you'll find plenty of uses for it while working in the electrical industry. But one thing I strongly recommend that you don't use a hammer for is making minor adjustments to the position of electrical equipment on walls. You can hit harder than you think and it's very easy to damage some of this equipment and you can end up costing yourself quite a bit of money replacing damaged stuff. Now we're going to have a look at a pair of grips. These are quite commonly used for tightening up nuts and bolts and they're a fairly useful tool to have, especially if you know how to use them in the correct way. Now they're designed to turn a particular direction. If you apply pressure onto this handle, whatever is gripped onto it, it will automatically tighten its grip 
so you can spend more time on actually turning whatever it is it's gripped onto rather than squeezing and trying to keep hold of it. If you were to turn it the opposite direction, you'll find that it actually starts to loosen its grip and it can make your task very difficult. Another tool we're going to look at today is the flat file. Now, this is generally used after you've been cutting bits of metal conduit or metal trunking just to make sure that you trim off the edges to make sure there's no sharp bits of metal that may damage cable when you're installing it. All tools should be manufactured to a specific standard. This helps to ensure that they're designed specifically for their intended purpose and also that the safety of the end user is provided. The Student's Guide to the IT Wiring Regulations provides some more details about these standards and how tools should be used and maintained. It is always important to follow the manufacturer's instructions to ensure that you're storing the tools correctly and that you're using them correctly. This helps to save you potentially hundreds of pounds in the future by not damaging the tools by incorrect storage and usage and also helps you to remain safe while using the tools in the industry. Yeah.